For the International Day of Peace this year, we decided to host a series of circle conversations with members of the Center for Peace Advancement community, ranging from our core collaborators to our incubator participants and partners like the Kindred Credit Union. The idea is to build connection between members of our community who are in the nitty gritty doing peace work every day and sharing stories about what the reality of that work looks like, what are the hard parts, what are the things worth noting and, and celebrating. The International Day of Peace happened on September 21st and we're celebrating with these circle conversations throughout this fall and we invite you to follow along with the videos we put out with our community. Thanks! I have come to believe over and over again that what is most important to me must be spoken, made verbal and shared even at the risk of having it bruised or misunderstood. So can you share a story about making the decision to pursue peace and justice with your time and energy in the work you're doing? A story about choosing to go down that path. When I was young, my dad, he, he changed the way that cars um, operate. In Iran, there were so many people with mobility disabilities. Some, there were pilots or soldiers from the war between Iran and Iraq, and, the, and there were ones with, that was born with disabilities. He, changed their cars into um, hand control. So someone came with a Mercedes, BMW, any kind of make, he changed it to hand control. And his profit was very low, but he was really satisfied with what he was doing. And I, I thought, I'm not a doctor. I can't help people this way or that way, but I can contribute to the citizens with improving accessibility. And then I was introduced to your group um, Amy at that time was working and I emailed Amy and then Paul and, and I'm really glad that we are here. What is one pressing peace or justice issue that you are passionate about addressing through your work? Is there one that kind of comes to the surface today or in this moment that you can speak to? It's one of the fun things about being a part of the Center for Peace Advancement is we get to learn about like dozens of really interesting and pressing and significant issues and um, there are a lot of really compelling ones. I'm probably most passionate about this intersection between peace building and technology. There are all kinds of ways in which technology has been contributing to harm and injustice in our world, and maybe there's recognition of that in ways there hasn't been until, until recently, but I think that's, that's a, been a common part of the human story. Technology is exacerbating or perpetuating and fostering injustice, but also the role that technology in its proper place can be playing toward helping to tackle and make, make positive contributions toward uh, a more peaceful and just world. I'm very passionate about refugees, but I think the piece that I find them focusing more on these days is really driving from essentially just that, that looking at every other person as your neighbor and that that applies so wholeheartedly to people that we don't know, that we don't understand, whose stories are so much more complicated. I think that's where I've focused in the last few years and probably more unproductively I've focused on the fact that people can have a complete disregard for human life when it infringes on their rights or their um, way of life or, or perceived rights and ways of life. There are so many people, and especially refugees, but so many different groups of people who just, you know, are fleeing circumstances, are every bit deserving of, of a home and a life and a right to work and to provide and to even just a right to dignity. There's an inherent value in caring for one another because it does so much more than just a physical act of water or, or shelter. It's, it's recognizing the humanity in someone else, so yeah. Well, one of uh, many things I'm passionate about on a personal and professional level, one would be, a key one would be arms control and disarmament for obvious reasons. <laughs> that consumes me sometimes. Uh, the intention is to stop the arms sales and that's uh, that's how I see it, and, and it's never to to be on the rec like to go on the record or to to say you know after the fact we said something when the time was right or to shame the government or to raise funds for project plowshares or, or in the background or you know anything like I literally want to stop them and every time they make the news I feel maybe we will stop them like uh, mm -hmm. and, and 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 that's how I explain it to my board like we're in the in the impact business like we want to make a change. I mean, we're not just uh, 
uh, denouncing things, we we're affecting change, and that's, that's uh, sort of how I see it. The human suffering is a real thing, has been for many years, uh, uh, forever, but it's a real thing for me. I mean, that notion of reducing human suffering, not, not as a, um, an abstraction, but as a practical matter that it, it sucks to suffer. When you mention peace or peace advancement, just to a random person in a grocery store, they'll say, oh yeah, the world needs more peace, doesn't it? And at any moment in time, you can inevitably point to like bad things happening in the world somewhere or in our community somewhere, or like that, the urgency, I think never goes away. It only gets greater. What we do, what I do in this role is celebratory, really. Like it's, it's been about, like I probably spend more time celebrating the, the progress and the marks of change or learning or just things happening in the midst of the CPA community. But I was thinking back to like the fifth anniversary, we had a fundraising dinner and I gave a talk, talk about sort of how the vision has been unfolding with the center and trying again to build enthusiasm. People coming up after that talk were really like just commenting on how striking like this tone of hope or enthusiasm or positivity that they wouldn't expect when you talk about peace, like it tends to be more like bad news, more bad news. And here we are telling stories of new things consistently, right? Not just here or there, but every month there's something new and exciting and interesting. You know, it's not like peace is reigning everywhere or the end has been achieved, but there are these mark markers of progress. And it's just striking how I think it's not just in the context of that dinner, but when I speak in churches or to community groups, the overwhelmingly consistent response afterwards is people just being like, wow, like this is so exciting to be hopeful about something in these contexts. It's a rare thing and a privilege. Something I've seen in a lot of folks in the CPA and, and beyond that that grounds their work is keeping humanity in the conversation. If we don't celebrate the humanity as we're trying to dismantle and rebuild, like how do we even know the direction that we're trying to rebuild in? Mm -hmm. And I, I think that really has to be our guidepost continually moving forward is always bringing humanity back in, right? Like what's beneath the statistics? What's beneath these sound bites and 30 second clips? Who are these people beyond their 30 seconds in the news? And, and what does it mean to thrive in this context? And I think folks in the center are so good at that. So good at bringing people into peace building. And I think without that, it becomes, I don't have the right words, but, but a, a bit of a ghost town, right? It becomes then a debate or an intellectual argument. It loses the soul of, of when we've all spoken about, you know, just that feeling. I think that's people. When despair for the world grows in me and I wake in the night at the least sound, in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water and I feel above me the day blind stars waiting for their light. For a time, I rest in the grace of the world and am free. And in all the work that we do, where we need to have this foresight and this fear and this, I, I wish that for all of us, mm. that we can find spaces to rest in stillness and simplicity and find that freedom while we hold the heaviness and the hard stuff.